Hello friends, this video on our skeletal system and skin part 2 is presented by Deekshahab.com Learn with passion. Topics to be covered in this video are Parts of human skeletal system The human skeletal system can be divided into two parts, the axial skeleton and the appendicular skeleton system. Let's discuss these skeleton systems in detail. Axial skeleton system. The axial skeleton consists of the skull, the spine and the rib cage. These are situated symmetrically along the central vertical axis of the body. Let's discuss the parts of axial skeleton system in detail. Skull. The skull is formed by the bones of the head and face. The bones of the skull are flat and strong. There are altogether 22 bones in the skull, from which 8 in the head and 14 in the face. Note that, except for the lower jaw, none of the bones of the skull can move. Rib cage. Feel the left and right sides of your chest with your hand or finger. How many bones can you feel all together on the two sides? There are 12 pairs of flat bones which we called ribs. Now, check in the center of your chest. How many bones do you feel? In the chest, there is one vertical flat bone called the sternum. The cage-like structure in the chest is called the rib cage. These 25 bones form the rib cage joined to the spine at the back. The spine is formed by padlock-shaped bones placed straight one above the other. There are all together 33 bones in the spine, each called a vertebra. These bones are arranged, one above the other flexibly. The spine protects the spinal cord, that originates from the brain. Think yourself. What would have happened, if we didn't have a backbone? If we don't have backbone, then our body has no support as it would not possible to sit or stand. Appendicular Skeleton System The human body has two arms and two legs. The different parts of the arms and legs have several bones which are connected together by joints. So, let's see joints and types of joints. Joints and types of joints When we move the different parts of our body, from the head to the toes, we observed that, the different places at which, they can bend or turn. From this we can define the term joint. Before defining the term joint, we will discuss, what is ligament. A ligament is the fibrous connective tissue that connects bones to other bones. The bones in our body are connected to each other by means of ligaments. Joints Joints are the places where two or more than two bones are connected to each other. Now, let's discuss the types of joints. There are two types of joints. One is movable joint, and other one is immovable joint. Movable joints are further classified into three types, hinge joint, ball and socket joint and gliding joint. Movable joints, the joint in which bones can move are movable joints. Bones of arms and legs are the examples of movable joint. Immovable joints. The joint in which bones cannot move, are immovable joints. Bones of skull, 
other than lower jaw, is the example of immovable joints. Now, we are going to discuss types of movable joints. Hinge joint, this type of joint allows the movements of bones, only in one direction. In this type of joint, bones moves in a 180 degree angle. Example, the elbow and knee joints. Ball and socket joint, the joint in which bones can move in two or more directions are ball and socket joint. Bones in this joint are moves in 360 degree angle. Examples of ball and socket joint are shoulder and hip joints. Gliding joint, the joints in which bones can only slide over each other. Examples of gliding joint are wrist and ankle joints. The skin, which organ helps us to sense whether something is hot or cold, rough or smooth. Our hand or tongue helps us to sense something is hot or cold. Also, our hand helps us to sense roughness or softness of the object. Here, we can see, the skin of our hands helps us to know about that object. So, let's see, what exactly the skin is. The outermost covering of the body is called skin. Observe your skin. What do we see? We can see that, the skin has hair. There are nails on the skin, at the tips of the fingers and toes. Also, the skin gives us the sense of touch. From this, we can say that, skin is an important sensory organ of the body. Structure of the skin Human skin is made up of two main layers. The outermost layer is called, the epidermis. Epidermis has various layers. The layer below it is called, the dermis. Below the dermis, there is a network of blood vessels and nerve fibers. The subcutaneous layer under this network, maintains normal body temperature. Do you know, how we got the skin color? We get the skin color due to melanin pigment, which is present in our body. The melanin is synthesized in certain glands in the skin. In the diagram, we can see that, the melanin is synthesized in epidermis. The percentage of melanin decides the fairness or darkness of the skin. The color of the skin also depends on the climate. Melanin protects our skin and the inner parts from ultraviolet sun rays. Melanin also determines the color of our hair too. Jet black hair is due to pure melanin, while brown lighter hair is due to sulfur in the melanin and reddish hair due to iron in the melanin. What happens when we walk or play in the hot sun? When we walk or play in the sun, we get tired, but at the same time our skin becomes wet. This is because of sweat. In the skin, there are glands which secrete sweat. They are called sweat glands. After playing in the hot sun or after hard physical labor, the temperature of the body rises, as a result of which sweat is released. Also, it helps to reduce the temperature of the body. Have you observed your skin and the skin of your grandmother? grandfather or any old people in the house. What difference do you notice? As we grow older, the proportion of fat beneath the skin reduces. However, the previously taut skin does not shrink. This causes wrinkles on the skin of older people. Thank you for watching this video. Keep learning and keep sharing.